Hey guys, how are you all today? I hope you're marvellous. <sighs> I'm just taking like five minutes out to myself because it's been a very, very silly, hectic month. And I've just been kind of thinking about um, how has this first month gone? So if you remember about four weeks ago, I was sitting there having my last paycheck, thinking, oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And, sorry, I'm wriggling, I'm trying to get comfortable. Um, in truth, is my life mega different? was that moment of getting the last paycheck was it like a dam bursting or a river drying up or something <sighs> no it wasn't <laughs> things haven't changed that much really um i think that's partly because the way i was living beforehand is the way i'm continuing to live i think the biggest thing in this first month, um, quite a shock. Listen, I thought about a lot of things before I kind of took the plunge and I listened to a lot of other people and what they said and their experiences. So I was sort of prepared for an initial period of, um, you know, adjustment obviously, but of tiredness. <laughs> I was not expecting what I've just experienced. Um, seriously, just totally exhausted all the time. Like, I go to bed. Now, I'm not sleeping great. That's one thing. I'm not sleeping great because of the pain. So hopefully I'm seeing my consultant next month and we can start to look at some surgical options and, you know, get things a bit better. So I'm not sleeping great, but even so, even with having siestas or trying to have a good bedtime routine, just feeling exhausted. But actually, I think that's perfectly normal, perfectly natural, and it's perfectly okay. I think it's just literally my body is letting go of years of um, emotional and physical stress, 4.30 alarm clocks, four hours sleep between shifts that kind of thing so i'm not too worried so yes i've been really really tired but never mind that that i hope will change as the months go on um i have missed a couple of things now that i'm not really using my money i've missed cheese <laughs> Oh my goodness, I never thought I'd be <laughs> looking down at camera and telling people how much I miss cheese, but I do, I miss cheese, never mind. Um, I need to do some sewing, I need to do some sewing to earn some money to buy some cheese, but then I'll be happy again. Um, I've kind of, I've, I've sort of missed some, there's some spontaneity I've missed and there's sp some, but I can't get my words out. Some, some, I can't speak, some spontaneity that I've missed and some spontaneity that I've enjoyed. So the spontaneity I've missed is that thing of after work or when I've got a couple of days off, friends call and say, hey, we're going to the park, we're going to do a picnic or we're going to the pub, whatever it is. So if it's the pub, I'm having to say, no, I can't because, you know, I've got no money to buy a beer. If it's go to the park, then that's kind of okay because I can still contribute. So I can make some food at home and bring it and I'll bring food and someone gives me beer, that's nice. So I've kind of missed that just being able to do things on a whim because actually I've got money in my bank account. Oh, so for instance, the last few days, really hot. I fancied an ice cream yesterday. Uh, are there any ice creams in my freezer? Have I made any lolly ices? No, I haven't, because we've not got our summer fruits yet. So I had to go without an ice cream. 
because <laughs> I'm not going to the shops to buy one and I really really wanted one but it's okay and actually the whole food thing has got me thinking about the the timing of when I've done all this because actually I've started to have my little journey with no wage in the hungry gap so any of you who grow your own food or who read about growing your own will know that term the hungry gap and what we mean is we generally especially if you overwinter your garden and still have things coming in during the winter we get to about the end of february and most of our crops in terms of fresh crops are done hopefully you have stored stuff because you've been storing during the autumn and the winter and we don't really get our fresh stuff until the very end of May into early June so in some ways you could say if I'd started this little experiment for a year in say July there'd be tons of fresh stuff to eat I'm actually kind of glad I started it when I did well I had kind of Look, in, ultimately there was no choice because I couldn't work anymore. But I'm quite enjoying the challenge of... So for a month and a half, nearly two months, I've been relying on stored food. Dried beans, onions and squash that were just left to air dry, frozen bits and pieces, so the last of the parsnips, carrots, what have you. So I'm eating all stored produce. And I have never ever looked forward to my first fresh bite of my own home grown, grown veggies more than I have this year so literally in the last few days I've been having my own garlic and my own broad beans and that's it at the moment that's it but literally steaming those broad beans and then giving them a little bit of a garlic dressing oh heavenly so actually, I think it's making me appreciate the food I am having even more. It's also been quite a wake-up call this month because I've been quite busy in the garden. Now, it's always been a completely lovely, fun thing to do. It's never been anything pressurised. This year there have been a couple of times in the last sort of three months where I felt, oh, I felt this kind of, the garden is actually now work because if I don't do it, the food doesn't come, what I'm going to feed myself on. And I'm still having those thoughts quite regularly. So I do feel a little bit of pressure, which has on occasion taken a little bit of the edge off the pleasure. However, that's only occasional. But this year, more than ever, it's taking more time. So beforehand, I would maybe spend 10 to 15 hours a week on the plot, and that was enough to give me about 70% of my food requirements. I know all this because I keep notes, really detailed notes of time and amounts and what have you. This year I'm noticing, and I think it's partly because of my my mobility isn't so good and that pain is making me go a bit slower and I'm a bit more awkward so say last year what I would achieve in eight hours in a day off is now taking me two days of maybe a six or seven hour session so I've definitely learned in the last month that the garden is taking up more time but also because I'm being really, really precious about harvesting and preserving, even now. Um, so say, whereas a year ago, I'd be giving stuff away, left, right and send her. But because I'm now keeping it for myself, that means that after a six hour session in the garden, I'm going home and doing a two hour session in the kitchen to make sure things get stored and preserved. It's all fine. So that's going okay. Um, the biggest thing that I've done wrong this month um, and it's got me really quite grumpy at times um, I'm not 
I'm not doing my time right. I'm not doing my planning right somehow. I, I couldn't put my finger on it for a few weeks, so two, three weeks, but I think I've worked out what it is. Um, so I'm quite, I'm a very organized person. I'm used to say at work, when I was working, working literally minute by minute, and bang on that minute. I've always been a kind of person who does lists, so my to-do lists, and within those, sorry I'm fidgeting, I can't quite get comfy. <laughs> um, within those to-do lists, I would always have a today, this week, this month, longer term. So I think, and this is my advice for anyone else who's going to be in a similar position to me, this is what I did wrong. Over the last sort of four or five years at work, when I've had time off, I've been either in the garden, because I love it, or else looking after my great aunt, because I'm her primary carer. <clears throat> so she's 97 and needs quite a bit of help. So during days off from work, like I say, I'm either gardening or caring. Everything else has been on the back burner. What I stupidly did was bring all the back burner stuff to the front burner the minute I got that last paycheck and suddenly think, right, that's it. I'm going to finish the bathroom. I've got a door to hang. I've got this to do, that to do. I've got these friends to see, those friends to see. I, I'm going to do these cookery things with some people who don't know how to cook. I've got relatives to visit. This massive long list. And what was happening was I was I was achieving some of it each day, but I kind of based those lists on the me of 10 years ago when I had loads more energy each day and didn't have really um, sore body parts. So I was getting to the end of each day, half my list wasn't done, so I was carrying it forward to the next day. And what I really didn't do, and this is the rookie error I'm trying to explain is in my to-do list I didn't give myself a day off which sounds kind of wackadoodle doesn't it you know oh you finished work you're not working every day is a day off well actually the truth is yes I finished working for someone else but if you are seriously trying to feed yourself entirely from your own land rather than going to the shops ever, or going to the shops rarely, that's pretty much a full-time job on its own. If you're then also caring for an elderly relative, that's also almost a full-time job. And suddenly I kind of stacked things up and realised I've not given myself any space. I've not given myself any time to just relax, really, or I was going to say any time to reflect, but I think that's not quite right because I think I'm always reflecting. So, we're about to go into another month. Uh, I think it's even more daunting this month because this is going to be the first month where I have to use a little bit of the savings to pay the bills and I've done a, a, a few sewing jobs during May as well. I've been really busy. That's brought in about 100 quid so that's going to help towards the bills and maybe a little bit of contingency for some... I need some rice, I need to get some oil and some little bits and pieces. Um, need to get some more Epsom salts for my bathroom at home because I used the last of them on the blooming tomatoes. <clears throat> so yeah, I think going forward, what have I learned? I've learned that, yes, I do grow my own food. I have done in the past, but growing all your own food, all of it is, yeah, it's hard work, it's full time, it's pressurised and it's a little bit scary. Um, I've learned that I need to give myself maybe one day a week where I just don't 
pencil anything in and I don't say yes to anything. Actually, that's another thing this month. I found it really hard to say no. So I'm getting loads of phone calls, emails, Facebook messages, all that kind of stuff with friends saying, oh, hey, Vivi, you know, now you've retired. <coughs> I'm not retired, I'm taking a year out. You know, you stopped working. Do you think you could mind the cats for a week? Or, oh, Vivi, you know you're not working. Could you babysit all weekend? Or house mind for the weekend? Or this, that and the other. Da, 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 da. So in the past, where I would be able to say, no, sorry, I'm not free, I'm at work. It's really difficult now. So I have had a couple of requests to do things and I've said, no, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to be able to. And then these friends have turned around and said, uh, why? You're not working. And I'm like, well, I know why I'm saying I can't do it. I know it's because it's the one clear of rain day this week and so I have to get into the garden because that's my food for the year. But it's too much to try and explain it to, to folk. Anyway, so I have to learn to say no a bit more clearly learn to plan in one rest day a week, learn to just not feel so much pressure about the garden. I mean, I, I love it. You guys know I love it. But if those little thoughts creep into my head, it's just to say, nah, be gone with you thought. And on the whole, I feel happier, I'm definitely more relaxed, I feel healthier in both, both, no, the three, body, mind and spirit in all three. I can't wait to see how this year is going to pan out. But in the meantime, I need to go back out into the garden now to water my precious seedlings so I've got food to feed myself. So I will say cheerio for now. Also, I just want to say, um, this is really important actually. One of the things I talked about four weeks ago was that concept of about leaving things and going to new things. And I was saying about leaving the community of work because that was a really really strong 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 bond I had with those nurse colleagues and I was worried about how much I would miss that um I've been really lucky that a lot of the girls <laughs> they're just doing my face all the time which is great and I've been seeing folks so that's lovely but a huge huge thing is you guys because you're all, you're all so positive. You are openly and freely sharing your experiences too, which are so wonderful. I, I love hearing your stories. But more than that, you're just giving me this kind of, it's like viral love. Actually, that sounds wrong. That sounds like something you need to go to a doctor for, viral love. You know what I mean? This kind of, it comes through the ether. I honestly, I feel it. It's fantastic. I feel supported by you all and I just feel like, I feel like I could fly actually. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking time out to make comments. Let me know what you're all up to. It's the best feeling in the world. So now I will say, cheerio i hope you all have a great great week ahead of you month ahead of you summer ahead of you year ahead of you life ahead of you and i will see you all again in a month's time i'll see you before then but you know what i mean take care